Hey everybody, Chell here with Prismatic Powders, and welcome to today's video, and thanks for being here, or there. Today we're going to show you how to get consistent results when spraying transparent powders. Now there are no hard and fast rules for this, but we'll show you what works for us, and then provide you some insights that will hopefully help you. Now the key to getting consistent results is consistent mill thickness. And obviously that's a simple statement, but that doesn't mean that the practice is completely easy. So we're going to dig a little bit deeper. But first, click those like and subscribe buttons. We appreciate your support on our channel. Now the starting point for any powder is the tech data sheet. Along with a ton of other helpful information, the tech data sheet informs you what the target mill thickness is going to be for each powder, and that's going to guide you towards getting the correct results. Now the reality of spraying transparent powders is you really need to be on point when it comes to managing your mill thickness. So experience is, is, is really invaluable. Now transparent powders will get darker the heavier they're sprayed, so understanding the primary factors of building mill thickness is fundamental. Gun settings, hand speed, distance to the part, they all play a role in how your powder builds up. So if you're spraying a variety of parts, you need to know how to adapt your settings and techniques for each part. And how you approach spraying a flat panel is going to be different than spraying something that has a lot of angles or something round. And as always, before you spray a new color, we recommend spraying some test panels or pieces first, and then this way you gain familiarity with that powder. So today we're gonna be spraying transparent copper on a variety of parts, and we recommend spraying Super Chrome Plus as a base coat, and we've already got that on the base coat for these parts, so we can just jump right into spraying that transparent copper. So let's go down to the booth and get started. Ensuring that you have a good ground is fundamental to getting consistent results, ideally a true earth ground. We're going to start with the sphere. Even though the part is round, I'm going to spray like it's a cube. This will help me keep track of my start and end points, while ensuring that the powder lays evenly. And of course, I'm watching the powder build up while paying attention to my hand speed and distance. Let's move on to the spring. The spring has some challenges that the other parts don't because there are some tight spots. So I'm actually gonna start on these spots. I'll also be pulsing the trigger to help coax the powder in. If I'm not careful in my approach, this will result in me spending more time feathering the powder in and thus a dark spot on the spring. Since powder has a tendency to wrap, I'm going to shoot through the bottom and the top to get coverage on the inside, and then I'll finish up on the outside. And just like the sphere, I'm going to spray this like it has four sides. The goal here is to get a bit of powder on the hard to reach areas, and then I will finish up on the outside and the powder should wrap. These little truck bodies are not tricky to shoot, but there are areas that are not as easy as the rest. In this case, it's the truck bed. There are ridges and angles where the powder doesn't lay as easily as the rest. So what I'm going to do here is spray the truck bed last. The reason why I'm doing this is because the indirect spray angle that I will have when I spray the rest of this truck body will help fill in some of those ridges. Then all I'll need to do is touch up what is left. And now we're gonna put our parts in the oven and we'll check them over to see if we have even tones. All right, let's check out the final result. Okay, that's it for today's video. Hopefully it was helpful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.